do you have a tendency to use scripture as a weapon? I want to talk about that next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. <music> I see who I am, God sees who I am becoming. Such a great mug, one of our older ones, and uh, a steaming cup of hardcore coffee. It's one of our greatest coffee, uh, ground coffee blends. And by the way, this is really smooth. Most of the time you drink uh, really dark coffee and it's not very smooth. This is smooth, just saying. And uh, by the way, we have subscriptions now. If you forget to order, it'll be automatic. Just go to our site and get that and our mugs and all of our cool stuff. We are metalwearefamily.com. Dear Pastor Bob, should we use scripture to bash our spouse when they sin? Boy, there's a loaded question. It seems to happen sometimes in my marriage. We each will bring up specific scriptures that deal with each other's sins. And we beat each other down with what the Bible says. I know this probably isn't the proper way to use the Bible, so how do we overcome this? How do we share what God's word says in love? I know the Bible says to do it, but it's much easier said than done. Is it a sin to share what the Bible says in an unworthy manner? <laughs> Isn't that a great question? I love this one. And, you know, <clears throat> marriage is difficult at best. Just saying. And those of you that are married, you're going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is. And, uh, you know, we need a foundation in marriage that will allow it to continue and prosper and that will allow you to fall more deeply in love with your spouse. And what is that? Well, honestly, your relationship with God and your relationship with the Word of God as a, a foundation, as an encouragement. You know, there are so many times that we have used the Scripture to beat each other over the head, and it's interesting that we do that, isn't it, honestly? because that's not how we want to receive it. It's not why God wrote the Bible. It's not why it was given to us. If the Bible is truly a love story, then it encompasses all of these things. Let's go first of all to, uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And that great scripture here. It says, every scripture is God-breathed. In other words, given by his inspiration through the Holy Spirit. And it's profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error, for discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness and holy living and conformity to God's will and thought and purpose and action so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Well, how about that? If you see your, your spouse sinning, shouldn't you just correct them with the Word of God? Well, here's what the Bible says. Well, no. There's a right time to say things, and there's a foundation to build upon. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 is the next scripture I want to go through. And it says, therefore, encourage and edify, strengthen, build up one another, just as you are doing. In other words, do you see why this is important, folks? Because when you have this as a foundation, that you are there to love, to identify, to, I, 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 Let me try that again. <laughs> when you are there to edify, to love, and to strengthen the other person, to build them up, that everything that you do goes through that filter. 
You know, to love somebody isn't to do this all the time. Sometimes it's waiting for the right time to say something. And many times it's seeing that very same fault in ourselves. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Many times we get the most upset about what somebody else is doing because it's actually something we're struggling with too. It's true. When I commit to living my life with another person in marriage, I make a huge commitment to build them up, to love them unconditionally, and to nurture them. Now, nurturing them is a whole different thing. Nurturing means love, unconditional love. Sometimes it's overlooking things for the time being. And a lot of times when we grab the word to beat somebody over the head with it, we're just looking for a really good excuse to tell them off, to beat them up, to make them feel bad. Is that what the Bible's for? Not at all. And you know, you could play this game all day long. We sin all the time. You could point out your your spouse's sins all day long, and they could do the same with you, and we could do the same with each other, married or not. That isn't the point. The point is that we have a foundation where we all begin to learn together. And here's the most important piece of advice I have for you today. If you don't have a time when you are uh, actively engaged in the Word of God and in prayer with your spouse, then you have no right to do this. You just don't. Because you build on this foundation. You know, this is the, the key. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. If you're standing on him, if you're if you are if if your feet are, are secure in your relationship with him and you're building that relationship with each other, then the last thing you want to do is beat each other over the head with the scripture. You know, I find that people that beat other people over the head with scripture are not spending any other time in the word necessarily, especially with other people nurturing other people with it because when you are used to nurturing with the word of God it's really difficult to beat each other up over the head with it so folks I hope that encourages you and I'm so glad we have the Bible to encourage each other because it's the greatest book of encouragement around don't forget you are blessed so go and be a blessing